Is that better? There we go. Hello. I want to talk to you because I get a lot of questions about different muscarias from different continents. When I first started using Amanita, I said that there really wasn't much of a difference as far as what they're made of. They're all the same. But now that it's been five years since I've been using Amanita and I've been fortunate enough to use different Amanitas from different continents and talk to a friend of mine who's been trying to get them tested from different continents, I can tell you there are differences. It's subjective until we can get actual numbers on them. And it looks like there are some preliminary numbers that may also lend credence to what I am experiencing subjectively. So we'll start with the European continent. Of course, those are the closest to the original genetic ones that we believe first showed up about 32 or so thousand years ago in Russia, Siberia, and in parts north. To me, compared to the ones here in Georgia, the ones that are in Europe are much more hard hitting. They get to the work pretty quickly. So let me give you something to compare it to. By the time the mushrooms are carried, the spores were carried across the Bering Strait into the North Americas, and then they started to have to evolve and adapt and change to this continent and to the environment, they changed colors and they continued to change until finally they changed so much that by the time they got to the southeastern United States and Georgia, where I am, Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, they had changed so much genetically that they were taken away from Amanita muscaria variety persicina and put in their own species recently. So now they are Amanita persicina, but they have the same constituents inside, same actives, same components. When I take the ones here, they are very heavy in the laughter and the joy side of things, as you can witness on amanitadreamer.net, because I can't show you on YouTube me ingesting this mushroom or using it. Yes, I know other people can now, but YouTube decided early on on my channel that wasn't allowed. I got lots of strikes and they still watch my channel, so I'm not allowed to do that. So please go to amanitadreamer.net and then go to the playlist where I do all these things on camera. And you will see there's a lot of laughter and front loading of this dancing and this joy and this upside. And still to this day, five years later, I will continue to say the ones that grow here continue to have so much more of that side. What is it that's doing that? I don't know because supposedly that ibotenic acid is coming in from the beginning and then it slowly converts to muscimol in the body, right? except that the European ones do the same. And my friend who is testing them says that there definitely is a difference and that it does look like there's higher concentrations of ibotenic acid in certain ones from Europe and less compared to some of the ones from the North American continent. But that doesn't make sense. If the ibotenic acid is responsible for all that laughter, then we're getting opposite effects then from ibotenic acid, which tells me there's more going on besides ibotenic acid that's causing that laughter and that positivity. The ones in Europe, I feel like, barely sort of come on with this lighter feeling, a warmth in the heart, and a sense of peace before immediately going into the harder hitting, harder side of it, work side of it, which is associated with that muscimol side and that down side and that deeper inner work side where ibotenic acid is more associated with the upside, the outer side, the focusing side, the sensory side, what you see outside of yourself side. And indeed, when you take higher doses, when the ibotenic acid is in your body, that's when you're actually tripping, moving around and can hurt yourself because you're experiencing the overlay of that experience on top of what you're seeing in reality until finally so much muscimol is converted that you can't stay awake anymore and you do the rest of your work in what I believe to be your normal sleep states or in theta and delta brain waves. We don't know exactly which areas of the continent test differently exactly. We're working on it. And I'll make a video when we get any of those answers. But to me, it feels like the ones from Siberia deal much more with the ancestors they feel ancient. When I take them, I feel like I immediately drop into ancient wisdom and knowledge. And I have a video on the importance of the Siberian Amanita muscaria. 
if it's not here, because I've lost count of all the videos that I've had to take down off this channel. They're all at amnitadreamer.net. When I take the Carpathians, they feel very balanced. Lithuania, those areas, Poland, a little further south, those feel a lot more balanced. The ones from Scotland feel like they go directly into the heart faster to me. The Canadian ones feel much more medicinal and like while they are caring for the emotional side, they tend to be much more concentrated on healing the trauma and the physical stuff stored in the body. They all do all of these things. Don't get me wrong. They all do all of these things. I'm just saying that it just feels more to me like these are the things they focus on more. They come in first with these things. And so the ones in the northern part of the North American continent just to me feel more medicinal first. Like they want to talk to you about your body first. And then they want to do the inner work. They feel less laughing and joking and a lot more peaceful and calm, like everything is good. I haven't tried any from the Australian continent. If you know of any way that I can get them, that would be great. I would like to do that. If you have different experiences, I would like to know about it. So you can let me know in the comment section. And of course, this is just my opinion and subjective. And we don't know what components are responsible for all of these different feelings that we get for the spirituality, the medicinal, the emotional. We haven't broken that down. I don't think we know how to break that down. And do we really care or want to? I kind of don't. I'm curious, but I kind of don't also want to thoroughly understand it that way. All of my work and videos about Amanita Muscaria are free on AmanitaDreamer.net. I don't even ask for your email address. So if there's more that you want to know or you have any questions about this mushroom, please go there and learn. But to support myself and pay the bills across all of these websites, which are very expensive monthly, you can help support me by going to mushroomvoice.com and looking at my store where I have one-time only items, handmade items, and regular items. I love you, beautiful people. I love you.